Welcome to this episode of Executive Insights, where I speak with Todd Gorella of Cisco Systems about how Cisco is transforming from being more than just a technology provider to a company working with an ecosystem to provide outcomes to their customers. Hey, thanks very much, Kevin. Great to be here. It's great to see you. So, you know, when we were talking about doing this session, you know, one of the things that we started talking about how Cisco, you were trying to convince me, it's really more of a solution company than a product company. You know, can you give me, a, give our, give everybody one example really where Cisco is doing more of a solution business? Sure. So most people think of Cisco just as a networking company. Certainly there's a lot of products involved in that. But when you look at what the network can do today, the amount of telemetry and the amount of data that comes from the network itself, uh, location services is a great example, whether you're in a factory and you're looking for inventory and where it's located, what part of the factory and doing inventory management under Wi-Fi, or if you're in an office space and you're doing social distancing here as people come back to the office. Those are just two great examples of how location services are enabled by the network that you know, we traditionally have built out and how the software over top of it is now giving you those insights. So do you have a specific example of a uh, implementation that you've done for a specific customer? And I'm not looking for the customer name, but just to help everybody understand a little bit more of what that means. Sure. So um, right now in some large factories and large automotive factories, We've done some of this where you know they have a very just-in-time process on their manufacturing floor. So they are looking for you know where is the inventory that's going to be needed to be moved to the to the line to allow you know those engines that they're putting in the six six cylinder engine that they're putting in today. What pallets need to be moved to the line at what time? And that's all being done right now at a few auto manufacturers underneath Wi-Fi with active RFID tags. And, uh, and it's a great example of what's being enabled in the manufacturing space. In office environments, we've already been working with some of the large consulting firms out there as they've deployed um, technology in their office space so that they can return to the office. And we're doing exactly that where, you know, as an employee comes into the building, the devices that they're carrying keep track of where they've interacted in the building so that should there be some sort of a, uh, sickness or something that needs to be notified to other employees, you can look at what proximity they were in and HR and, and the operations team of the of the company can now send out notices that maybe somebody has been exposed. So it's interesting because with uh, our dependence on networking, on Wi-Fi, uh, RFID, all of these different technologies, it's funny that the network and your, what you're describing, it's almost becoming like the central nervous system, right? A absolutely, what's, what's absolutely. The, there's so much data that can be garnished from the network itself. And we look at it as almost data exhaust in most cases. People don't even realize what's available out of, out of it. This technology change or the maturation of the technology has driven some changes within Cisco. I mean, the, your group exists, for, for example. I mean, give me a sense of within Cisco, what, what, what has happened internally in order to capitalize on uh, some of these uh, opportunities that you just outlined? Sure. So the reason that we formed an industry solutions group at Cisco was because we really needed to be able to show our customers and show our own Cisco uh, employees and partners how Cisco is relevant to the lines of business of our customers. So how are our technologies being utilized and deployed for real use cases that our customers are looking for specific outcomes around? Um, you know, whether it's in the hospital environment and you're looking at integrating uh, medical IoT devices into the network so that they can be better maintained, monitored, and also the patient health can be looked at holistically. Those are the types of things that um, you know we've had to go further than just the traditional, hey, we'll supply you a network, we'll secure it, those kind of things. We now have to go into what is it gonna to take to integrate those types of solutions into a holistic use case so that our customers can actually deploy in a more, more effective way and really get the outcomes quicker. So, Todd, it's interesting then that what you're talking about is, you know, I guess in the past you could consider that Cisco is largely a technology provider. You mentioned securing the network and but now in uh, uh, installing technology, but really looking your your group was formed in order to make sure a customer was getting their outcome that they wanted. What is a business outcome that they could need in applying that technology? Yeah, absolutely. Our, you know, if you look at the holistic solutions that Cisco can bring, not just network security, but also the uh, other automation of how you're going to deploy these technologies 
um, you can really get to that business outcome much quicker. And and across every industry, from healthcare, manufacturing, banking, retail, et cetera, it, it's the same type of process. There's a, a recipe to how you need to build the enabling technologies to get to that outcome quicker. Interesting. Yeah. You know, so you kind of touched on something which is always a big topic, as you said, secure, right? So and talking about cybersecurity is always an interesting discussion. Um, you know, maybe can you expand on that a little bit about you know what is Cisco's role in cybersecurity? What do you see it as 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 uh, what's the responsibility of Cisco with that topic? Sure. So Cisco's taken a very holistic approach to security. Uh, once upon a time, security from a networking perspective was just looked at as an appliance. And really, if you put a firewall in place, you know, that's, you, you've done your job security-wise. Uh, with the different types of threats and, and activities that are happening now, uh, you know, around the world, whether government or private sector, um, it's important to really look at security in a holistic way. And what we look at is, how are you going to detect how are you going to defend and then how are you going to mitigate against against those threats in the future? And uh, what we've done is we've acquired a number of companies over the last five years. And holistically, Cisco has the largest security portfolio, really larger than any of the total of if you put all other security players into one company, uh, we've got more security portfolio in what Cisco does. So. It is really about automating security. It's about identifying the threats and then uh, putting in place the appropriate tools so that the operators of the networks and operators of the applications can really um, you know, secure and, and lock down who has access to what. The biggest approach to things today is building things under a zero trust architecture. So assuming there's always a threat, even if you have isolated air gap networks or isolated air gapped applications, it's critical to look at it from a zero trust perspective so that whoever's logging into that system, whoever's accessing that network, um, it, it's key to know, you know that they've been validated to be the right person or device in, in many cases when you look into IoT. Yeah, so it's, I almost hear you saying, you know, it, it's easy to think of the old days when, uh, you know, you just worried about, did I secure my endpoints, my laptops and so forth, and if I have a firewall, I might be okay. What I hear you saying is the network is the one place where really you might be able to detect and understand any anomalies, uh, assuming everybody that's on the network might be a bad actor. Getting back to that concept of the network as a sensor, the network is a fantastic sensor to know what's happening, who's accessing, and what devices are there. Yeah, so like in the old days when Sun Microsystems used to say the network is the computer, to really, I guess you're saying the network is the security maybe. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, and so along that same topic, right, and certainly in, in the parts of the business that Schneider's in, you see a lot of what would be considered traditional OT systems now are coming on to the IT network, right? Um, you know, I'm just curious, what's your perspective on how is that impacting CIO organizations uh, that, that you're interacting with? Is that changing their scope? Um, what kind of impact is it having on them? So it's pretty much universally now the CIO is being looked at as, um, you know, what are you going to do to help us secure our systems? Uh, no longer can businesses make decisions around deploying systems, you know, in a vacuum where maybe the CIO or the IT department gets called in to help with the actual deployment. Uh, today, the CIO and the IT departments have a seat at the table. And the, and the reason they have a seat at that table is because of security. So as OT systems are migrating to modern systems that are based on uh, standard protocols that are based on more IT infrastructure and network. Um, it is more and more critical for the CIO to have a seat at the table during that decision making uh, when they're truly, um, you know, making the uh, evaluations of what type of architecture are they going to build. Um, and we've seen it pretty much universally accepted now in all sectors, all industries. We actually, for our factories, created a new organization within the CIO organization just to deal with the factories as uh, we're making them smart and bringing them onto the IT network. And uh, cybersecurity was one of the reasons that the factory guys actually wanted the CIO team involved in order to make sure that they were doing all of the right things. So uh, it sounds like we're not the only company that's experiencing some of those changes. No, absolutely. And, and you know, the IT network that OT is building on isn't always the internet the way we think of it. It's still sometimes an isolated network, but it's util utilizing the same set of tools that IT has traditionally used. 
And that that is something that's you know been a big advantage as we see these modernization of these systems. So, so as we're seeing these modernization of the systems and you see um, this transformation that's occurring that we've kind of touched on, uh, in order for your team to provide an outcome-based right solution for a customer, you know, are you doing it all your all on your own, or is there an ecosystem around you in order to help deliver those solutions? No, the, the ecosystem is really the delivery engine. Uh, we look at it as Cisco is an enabler of the outcome the customers are looking for. So partners like Schneider, absolutely, we you know we go to market with Schneider where you know you're delivering the total outcome to the customer. We're the enabling aspects of it. And, uh, and certainly we bring the expertise that we can bring with respect to network, compute, security, um, application, performance management, all those types of things, which are core to our portfolio, but it's core to the enablement of the outcome that you're looking to deliver to your customers. In some cases, Schneider might be taking the lead in some of these. Sometimes it might be one of our partners. Other times I could see where maybe Cisco is taking the lead as a trusted advisor. So the relationships really are changing depending on who is the most closest to delivering the outcome that the customer is looking for and the roles and the systems change. Is that uh, something you observe as well? Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it really depends on the solution area. If you look at smart buildings right now, obviously Schneider has a very, very strong place in the overall building infrastructure and building management systems and things. But at, when you're looking at what's happening as people are renovating their, their office space today, often Cisco is leading that conversation and we're bringing in the, uh, the digital technologies that Schneider has. So it's a very complementary relationship when we look at how the ecosystem needs to work. And then both of us work with smaller ecosystem players to deliver the total outcome as well. So Todd, thanks very much for sharing some of your insights on what's happening inside the industry. And certainly Cisco is a major player. Uh, the perspective is uh, a very valuable and important one. Thanks very much, Kevin. It's great to be able to help you simplify the complexity to our customers. Talk to you soon. Take care.